Today we're going to be looking at the binomial theorem and using Pascal's triangle to help us expand binomials of certain powers. So starting off, let's just look at Pascal's triangle. It was invented by a famous mathematician called Blaise Pascal. And one of the things that you'll notice is that you have ones down each of the main diagonal. And then to get the values in the actual triangle, what you do is you can add the two numbers above to get the number below. So 3 and 3 is 6, 10 and 10 is 20, 5 and 10 is 15, 1 and 5 is 6, and so on. So you can generate any row of Pascal's triangle by just knowing the row above it by adding the two um, values above the one that you want to find. So the other thing that you would see is you can see some um, the counting numbers. So here's our natural numbers, the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. It would keep going as the triangle expanded. In the next row, you'll actually see triangular numbers. Those of you that know triangular numbers, you can look at this as a triangle. So you have one starting here, and then you'd have three to form a triangle. And then the next one would be six. So you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the triangular numbers. And so um, you have that also on um, either side. Those are your triangular numbers. Um, you'll also notice that there's row numbers. You see them all listed here. I'm going to clean this out since this is getting a little bit busy. Um, triangular numbers, or the row numbers, um, you notice that it starts off at row 0, row 1. How I can tell the row number without it being there is if you just go 1 in from the side of 1, that's like row 3, so 1 number in that number will give you the row number. So this would be row five, this would be row six, and you can look at it from either side. So that would be row five, that'd be row four, and so on. So you have different rows of it, and that's how you denote the row, and you start off with zero. Now, one of the things, the most important things that we're gonna be using in terms of the patterns is how does this relate to probability, or in this case, we're gonna be looking at combinations. So. One of the things that I put here is a screenshot from the Inspire actually finding um, N or 4C0, 4C1, 4C2, 4C3, 4C4. And if you notice, I get 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And if you were to look at this, you have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Notice how if I did 4C0 all the way to 4C4, I would actually get that row. So I can generate row 4 by doing 4C0, 4C1, 4C2, 4C3, all the way to 4C4. Now, if you were to look at a different row, like for example, this one here, if I were to expand this, this time I did 6C0 all the way to 6C6. So I have 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. So I did 6C0 all the way to 6C6, which if you look at row 6, which would be right here, you would get those exact same values that I got down here. So that would just be taking the row number, starting at choose 0, so 6C0, going all the way to the last um, value, and then in this case it's 6C6, the row number. So I would have 6C6, okay? So you can generate any row. So row seven would be 7C0 all the way to 7C7. So question is how would I actually get row 20 of Pascal's triangle well, the nice thing about using these combinations is I don't have to row I don't have to know row 19 and add the values to get row 20. I could just go through and use this shortcut of 20C0, 20C1, 20C2 all the way to 20C20 and then I could get row 20 really easily. So that's another way you can use Pascal's triangle. It can be generated by combinations. So that brings us to the binomial theorem. And so go ahead and write this down. We're gonna figure out how to expand binomials of certain powers very easily. If you remember from last chapter, if I gave you x plus one cubed, you would have to multiply that out three times 
and do foil three times. If that was to the 10th power, you'd have to multiply that out 10 times. It's not a super efficient way of doing it. So this binomial theorem is going to help us have a better way of expanding things of certain powers. Um, so it'll be a lot quicker. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. So the binomial theorem, you're actually gonna be using this whole idea of combination. So if I have x plus y to the nth, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get nc zero, that's gonna give us our coefficient, times x, and I'm gonna have you do xy. We're gonna put on these co uh, exponents in a second. So it'll start off with nc zero, then it'll go to nc one, and then there'll be a power of xy, and then it'll be nc two, and there'll be a power of xy. We'll put in the powers in a second. And then um, we're gonna go all the way to ncn, we're gonna get that row of Pascal's triangle and then some power of xy. And we're gonna put on the powers. So I'm gonna use a different color to denote this. So one of the things that you're gonna do is if it's x plus y to the nth power, your first term is going to be to that power, it'll be n, and then it decreases by one each time. So the next x power will be n minus one, n minus two, n minus three, all the way till you get to zero. Now for the y term, it's gonna be a little bit different. It'll start off at zero and increase until you get to the value that you're raising it to, to this value of n. So that is going to be, um, that is gonna be the binomial theorem. So these values right in here, this nc0, nc1, nc2, is just gonna be the nth row of Pascal's triangle, okay? So when we look at that power, that will tell us what row of Pascal's triangle to actually use. So I have an example for you using this binomial theorem. And what we're gonna do is we're going to expand 2x minus one to the fourth. This is going to be your key term right there is that fourth. That is going to be the n in this value here. That's going to be the row of Pascal's triangle we look at. So what we'll do is we are going to have to expand this. So this is going to tell you to go to row four, 4c0, four 4c1, four 4c2, four all the way to 4c4. Four so this is row four of Pascal's triangle. So the first thing you're going to do is go up to Pascal's triangle and you're going to say, all right, I need row four. So let's highlight it right here. Row four is one, four, six, four, one. That's gonna be the four C zero all the way to the four C four. So you're gonna go ahead and write down all of those exponents. So you're gonna do one, four, six, four, one. And you're gonna leave some space. So notice how in the formula we were expanding an x and a y and there was an x and a y everywhere. Well, the two things we're expanding are a 2x and a negative 1. So you're going to put a 2x and a negative 1 next to each of those. So those are going to be the things that you're expanding. So I'll go ahead and put those there. And then in between, notice how there was a plus in between all those in the formula. So I'm gonna put pluses in between all of these. And the last thing that we have to do is we have to put on our exponents. So remember I said that that thing is to the fourth power? That first term starts off at the fourth power, then decreases each time until you get to zero. And then the other term, the second term, actually starts off at zero and increases by one until you get to n, or in this case, the power that we're raising it to. So then at this point, all you have to do is simplify. So when you go ahead and simplify, you're going to get um, two to the fourth. So you're gonna get one times two to the fourth, and we're just gonna go through um, and so we're gonna get 16 x to the fourth. Anything to the zero power actually ends up canceling out. So I get one times uh, 16 x to the fourth plus, and then I'm gonna get four times two cubed, which is eight x cubed times negative one. And then I'm gonna get plus six times four x squared times negative one squared is just a one. 
And then I'm going to get the 4 times the 2x times the negative 1 cubed is just a negative 1. And last but not least, I'm going to get a 1 times a negative 1 to the 4th, which is a 1. So I'm going to simplify all this. I'm going to get a 16x to the 4th. I'm going to get a 32, actually not positive 32. I have a negative 1 times a 4. So if I were to look at this, if I go back here, um, I have a 4 times an 8 times a negative 1, which ends up giving me a negative 32x cubed. Um, when I multiply the next values here, I get a 6 times a 4 times a positive 1, which is ends up being positive. So I get a 24x squared, and then I'm going to get a negative 8 x and then plus a 1. So that's going to give me the final value of this thing expanded if I were to expand this thing out four times. I would have had to expand 2x minus 1 out four times to get that answer that I just got by using Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem. So I have one other example for you. So one of the things that you'll be doing is um, finding different terms of something. So I want you to find the third term, and this thing's to the 15th power. If you go up to Pascal's triangle here, I don't even have row 15. I, the, 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 I think the largest, at least on this one, it goes up to row 13. So I have to generate row 15 by actually using combinations here. So if I were to just start off the process to get row 15, I would have 15C0, 15C1, 15C2. This is the third term. Whoops. Go back to that. So this is the third term. Whoa. That's gone. Let's try it again. 15Z0, 15C1, 15C2. This is the third term. So what I can do is I can then put the two things that I'm expanding. The two things that I'm expanding are a 2 and a negative 3x. 2 and a negative 3x and a 2 and a negative 3x. And I can use the binomial theorem. I could keep going if I wanted to, but I really only care about the third term. So I'm going to go ahead and put pluses in between those. And then I'm going to put the exponents on them as well. So I'm going to start with 15, then I'm going to go to 14, then I'm going to go to 13, and then I'm going to start this off at 0, 1, and 2. And if you haven't noticed, notice how these exponents, they always add up to what n is. So that will give you a little um, test to see if you have it right. So I really just care about this term right here. This, oh, that's not very, that's really dark. Um, I really just care about this 15C2, 2 to the 13th, and then that one. And so if I were to simplify that, that 15C2 is going to be 105 times 2 to the 13th, which is 4,096. And then negative 3 squared is a 9x squared. So when I multiply that out, I end up getting 3,870,720x squared. And so this is going to be your third term. Notice how that when you're finding the third term, this is actually one less than that. So it wasn't like 15C3 because you're starting off at zero. So it's actually one less than the term number that you're finding to get that coefficient. All right, so that's binomial theorem. That's a wrap. And 